Yo, what's good YouTube? It's your host, AG Sam right here, and welcome to the channel. And today I'm here to present you guys a new what if, this being the what if movie for what if Luffy was Gojo's reincarnation. That's right, y'all. It's finally time. I had this what if in the back burner for a while now, and I'm here to present it. Uh, if you guys actually don't know this, but originally I was supposed to upload this before the, you know, the what if Naruto was Jiren's reincarnation. But the thing was, I would have thought that, you know, the Jiren's reincarnation one would kind of be like have a bigger impact than the Luffy one. I'm not 100% sure now, but hey, here's the what if. So yeah, I'm really excited to bring it in, and I'm not really going to talk much for this announcement. I'm just going to jump right into it. Hopefully, you guys do enjoy. Another thing is, this will actually be my first time completing a, a One Piece what if, mostly because of the fact that One Piece is so gosh damn long that it's hard for me to remember everything. So if I make some mistakes here and there, I apologize. But at the same time, this is the first time I'm completing a true One Piece what if. So with that being said, guys, it's your host, AG Samurai. And why don't we get started? You're never gonna make it. You're not good enough. There's a million other people with the same stuff. You really think you're different, and you must be kidding. Think you're gonna hit it, but you just don't get it. It's impossible. It's not probable. You're responsible. Too many obstacles. You gotta stop it, though. You gotta take it slow. You can't be a pro. Don't waste your time no more. Who the fuck are you to tell me what to do? All right, guys. So we begin the what if with Luffy's origins. As we see him now, currently at the age of six years old, meeting up with Makino and getting himself an orange juice. At that same time, we also see Shanks' crew, as right now they were celebrating after, uh, after another successful voyage. Now, soon, Shanks actually acknowledges Luffy's presence, as he can sense this weird energy off this kid. The pressure that he was emitting was something that Shanks had never felt before, so he was interested and decided to ask Luffy, you know, about himself. And Luffy, already knowing that Shanks and his crew are pirates, of course at first was a little bit wary of them, but decided to go along with that as he decides to ask them questions as well. Soon they had to become actually good friends afterwards as even though they had a miniature conversation, they got along pretty great with each other. Now, as Luffy's enjoying his time with Shanks' crew though, this is when some bandits with an end turn begin to start up a ruckus. As he begins to demand boost from Makino while also beginning to make fun of Shanks' crew and Shanks himself. Luffy, not liking this at all, suddenly stands up calling the man pathetic, which angers the man enough to the point where he actually attacks Luffy. Now this causes Shanks' crew to try to react in order to save Luffy along with Shanks himself, but to their surprise, as soon as the bandits attack Luffy, they don't actually end up hitting Luffy at all. They're stopped by this invisible force as this will be Luffy activating Infinity. As they take in Luffy's appearance, they actually realize that there was a change in him. As Luffy before this actually still had his iconic look, this being black hair and black eyes, but now his eyes were now blue, as they were shining as the attack would be stopped. Now the man tries pushing more and more force into the blade, but it did nothing as this when Luffy then smirks, we were suddenly end up releasing this burst of energy that sends all the men flying, except for Shanks' crew. As we see the bandits now outside, now fearing for their lives, as they run away from Luffy, calling him a freak, with Luffy just shrugging it off and going back to drinking his orange juice. Now Shanks is deeply interested and begins to laugh about the display and begins to ask Luffy about what he just did, to which Luffy just explains that this was just his unique ability that he got since birth. You see, when Luffy was born into this world, Luffy had actually awakened with blue eyes in this one. And Garp, being Luffy's grandfather, saw this and was instantly impressed as Luffy was also emitting this weird energy. But along with this weird energy, though, as they would admit for a little bit of a while, we will see Luffy end up closing his eyes before opening once again to see that his eyes were now black. And ever since then, Luffy has been able to actually tap into this ability. He would usually use it whenever he was in danger as a way to stop himself from getting any damage. This worked against anything that Garp ever threw at him since Garp would always constantly put Luffy's life at danger and this actually allowed Luffy to get stronger with his technique. The only person who was actually even able to bypass this was for some reason Garp, which Luffy still had no idea how he did it. As even though Garp would throw his regular punches, they wouldn't work on Luffy until he began using his special trick. Luffy had asked Garp multiple times about what it was or how he did it, but Garp just kept silent saying that Luffy is way too slow in order to really learn this, Caught pretty much calling Luffy an idiot, which pissed off Luffy to the point where he would try challenging to Garp, only to lose. But still nonetheless, Luffy grew up fighting and this actually allowed him to the point where he's actually very proficient at using this technique. Now back to the main timeline, we hear Shanks laughing after Luffy's response, as he keeps finding out more and more about the world that makes him even more interesting. But soon after this, we do a time skip as we see Luffy and Shanks' crew continue hanging out with each other, getting along as soon afterwards it will be finally be time for them to leave. Now mind you right now, Luffy and Shanks' crew had got along to the point where Luffy has now admitted that he wants to become a pirate, and even better, he wants to become the pirate king. And although Shanks was of course like laughing and mocking at him, Shanks knew deep down that this kid will make a big change in the world. So with that thought in mind, he decided to leave his straw hat, telling Luffy that the next time he finds him to give it back. To which Luffy vows to make sure that promise is kept, 
But as Shanks is about to leave, this is when he then suddenly remembers something as he turns to Luffy and also tells him to make sure his abilities are in check. Now Luffy hearing this of course pouts a little bit and like looks to the side being a little bit pissed off as we're going to do a little bit of a flashback on this one. But if you guys don't know, Luffy did eat the gum gum no me in this one or the gum gum fruit depending on if you watch the sub or dub. And the reason for this one was actually way different than it did in canon as in this timeline the devil fruit was actually calling out to Luffy. And due to this, Luffy's body reacted on instincts alone to the point where Luffy couldn't even stop himself from doing it, as he suddenly picks up the gum gum fruit and just eats it. Now, Luffy activates his six eyes trying to make sure to stop himself and soon regain control over his body, but as he does, it was already too late. He gained the abilities. And at the same time though, when Luffy activated his six eyes, this is when he then ends up finding his entire scenery had changed. As now, he was in this misty, warm glowing area, or you see this weird spirit that was giggling, laughing, and having the time of its life bouncing around the area. And Luffy, after making the connection, is finding out that this was like the spirit of the devil fruit or anything like that, or something of that regard, he pretty much firmly declares that he won't rely on his power, since he was already strong enough as it is. But that's only what Luffy thinks, that's his own personal opinion. With the spirit after hearing what Luffy said, just suddenly end up giggling once again before bouncing off, with Luffy just sighing at it, thinking that was annoying. But nonetheless, Luffy still has the Devil Fruit's abilities, but he decides never to use it, mostly because of the fact he's confident in his own powers and abilities. So after this little exchange between Shanks and Luffy, Shanks' crew will then head off on their next journey while Luffy is left behind at the village, as we do another time skip. So soon after Shanks ends up leaving the island along with his crew, we hear Garp end up arriving back at the island and instantly get to scolding Luffy for even encountering Shanks, saying that he was a bad influence. To which Luffy would say he wasn't while also declaring that his dream was to become the next king of the pirates, to which Garb would have given him a bonk on the head for that response. As we move forward with the story, we will see Garb giving Luffy more and more training, while at the same time we also see Luffy fighting off against cursed spirits. As thanks to all that training with Garb as well as Luffy experimenting with his cursed energy, this actually allowed Luffy the ability to see cursed spirits, which also caused them to try to get towards him, trying to infect him. Which resulted in Luffy having no other choice but to fight off against these spirits, actually increasing his control of cursed energy, but also allowing him to slowly get way and way stronger. And soon after all that training, Garp ends up leaving Luffy alone at the Mountain Bandits, as he'll be raised there along with Ace. Now, Ace's encounters with Luffy would be going pretty similar to canon as he tries to, you know, spit on Luffy, only for Luffy to completely stop the spit from reaching him thanks to his infinity. And Ace being shocked at this was way too shocked to even react as Luffy would then punch him in the stomach, sending him flying and crashing through a tree, as this would end up getting the attention of Garp as Luffy would scold Ace, saying that was very rude. This would cause Garp to have no choice but to break Luffy off from Ace, since if he were to take it any further, the, boys the boy could literally die. And I'm talking about Ace in this one, because like, legit Luffy, he doesn't know how to hold back with his punches. And with that little mishap now moving aside, we will see Luffy growing up at the Mountain Bandit's place, as Luffy would be forced to fend for himself thanks to Dan Dan, to which he will gladly do so. I mean, Garp didn't feed him at all, he had to take care of himself mostly. So thanks to that, Luffy will be going out there early in the morning to hunt down his food, and whenever he did, he would have the Mountain Bandits cook it for him, and he would just enjoy eating the meal, and that would just be Luffy's life. Although, there will be times where Luffy would try to go after Ace since he thought he was fun and also since he was the only kid there, only for Ace to try to lose Luffy and fail miserably. It got so bad to the point where Ace even tries to fight off against Luffy, only for him to get defeated multiple times. And this soon starts becoming a regular daily thing for Ace, as every single time he would actually begin to openly challenge Luffy to a fight since he didn't want to be you know, weak in front of Luffy, and Luffy would just beat down on Ace since he was way too strong for him. Now this ends up leading to Luffy getting a little bit of a cocky attitude, as by now Luffy realized that he's way stronger than normal people, and due to this, he kind of just openly mocks Ace, telling him that he's way too weak to do anything to him, which results in Ace trying to continue hate Luffy, only to fail miserably multiple times. And soon after Ace ends up losing once again to Luffy, he starts trying to run back to his base, and this time he doesn't reject Luffy following him. This results to Luffy meeting Sabo Whaler than he did in canon, as this is when Ace begins to explain to Sabo his plan, which is pretty simple, using Luffy to get, you know, all the treasure that they need, while at the same time using Luffy to face off against enemies that they can't handle. Now, Sabo would of course agree to this since it was a pretty good plan, and with that, the trio had been formed. Now, while Luffy's excited to hang out with them and everything, Ace and Sabo are just plainly trying to use Luffy, that was it. Or at least, that's how it was supposed to be in the beginning. But over time, as the brothers continue going around and gathering, gathering things from people, they actually begin to come to actually like Luffy. Since Luffy most of the time would take care of any threats that tried to come across them, and even better was that he didn't even complain much. 
Even when they didn't even give him any of the treasure, he didn't even complain and mostly just stuck around to hang out with them. So due to this, they actually got along with Luffy pretty great and they would be even more shocked by Luffy since they found out that he was actually younger than them, which pushes them to try training even harder since to them, they now see Luffy as the, like the younger brother in this scenario and they can't have their younger brother fighting all their battles for them. Due to this, Ace and Sabo are actually way stronger than they were in canon, and they actually use Luffy as training since Luffy was obviously the strongest one out of all of them. This ends up resulting in Ace and Sabo being way stronger than they were in canon, which ends up resulting in them stealing a lot more stuff than they do in canon, allowing them to get way richer. I mean, it got so good for them to the point where they were even able to face off against literal pirates, as Blue Jam's crew was actually in the area and they were able to steal from them and not only that but, be able to, but beat up on the, all the pirates that were there. This ends up resulting in Blue Jam himself sending a large amount of his crew to go hunt down the boys, only for them to fall each time. Luffy throughout this point is slowly growing stronger and stronger, as well as his control over cursed energy is also growing even better. Now mind you right now, Luffy also got an increase in his cursed energy reserves, as every single time he will get more and more proficient at growing and increasing his cursed energy. Since he'll be fighting off against Ace and Sabo, even though they weren't much of a challenge, he'll be fighting, he'll be fighting off against large creatures that were in the area, he even be fighting off against cursed spirits. But as time continues to roll on though, we will see Luffy as well as Sabo and Ace then suddenly end up getting surrounded by bandits as this is when Sabo's father as well as the leader of the Blue Jam Pirates would then arrive. Blue Jam himself would look at the trio with disgust before suddenly end up looking at Luffy since Luffy matches the description of the boy who had been defeating all his strongest members. So he decides to ask Luffy to join his crew, making him an offer. To which Luffy will firmly declare that he doesn't want to be part of his crew since he was going to become the king of the pirates. And after hearing this, Sabo's father would then look at Luffy with disgust before suddenly ordering his men to take care of Sabo's little friends while he ends up getting back his son. To which Blue Jam has no choice to agree to although feeling disappointed that Luffy didn't join him. With that, all the bandits then attack Luffy and Ace while one of the bandits try to grab Sabo. But this ends up failing miserably on all of them since Luffy, Sabo, and Ace are able to take care of all the bandits before finally he's being left to only Blue Jam as well as Sabo's father. Sabo's father is scared of you know Luffy and Ace as well as Sabo as he begins to firmly declare that his son is a monster and that he will never get anywhere in life to which Sabo after hearing this just shrugs, not really caring all that much. But at the same time Blue Jam realized that these kids were the real deal and decided to run away with Ace screaming at him to never come back. And after hearing this and feeling his pride get damaged way too much at this point, this is when he decides to pull off a cheap trick and bring out a gun as he points at Ace. Seeing this, Ace is actually surprised since he's not fast enough to dodge bullets just yet. So due to this, when he ends up shooting the bullet directly at Ace, he has no choice but to be there and wait until it hits him, when to find out it doesn't. As Luffy ends up appearing in front of Ace and stopping the bullet before it hits him. Luffy after stopping the bullet would then turn directly into Blue Jam's face and just as Blue Jam was trying to you know, come up with the response, it was already too late. As Luffy decides to reveal a little bit of a new technique that he actually just gained. Through all that training with, with Garp, Ace and Sabo and all that cursed spirit fighting, Luffy had to finally unlock his cursed technique. As this is when Luffy would then suddenly form a small little blue orb at the tip of his fingers. As this is when Luffy would then shout out the technique, blue. In response to being called out, the blue ball would then be shot out from Luffy's fingers as when it did, it ended up destroying the entire area in front of it, crushing it into it. And Blue Jam, being in the way of its destruction, had no choice but to sit there in shock as this is when he would then be absorbed into the blue ball and crushed inside of it, leaving nothing behind. While Ace, Sabo, as well as Sabo's father are just shocked as well as horrified about what they just seen. Luffy looks at the direction of the destruction he just caused with a cold look on his face before suddenly turning to Sabo's father who ends up stumbling in response. At this Luffy looks at Sabo's father before suddenly preparing for another blue asking him if he wants next. To which Sabo's father is way too scared to make a response. Luckily though Sabo ends up saving him as he ends up telling Luffy that this is something that he needs to deal with. To which Luffy allows it. Now, after Luffy ends up deactivating Infinity though, he ends up feeling a large amount of soreness and tiredness as he used up a large amount of his cursed energy for this one. As Sabu ended up walking towards his father before putting his fist at him, causing Sabu's father to be afraid, this is when Sabu would then threaten him, saying that if he ever were to show his face in front of him as well as his friends, then he will kill him himself, to which this causes Sabu's father to be way too terrified to do anything but nod. After getting that response, Sabo ends up leaving along with Ace and Luffy, but Luffy is showing off his blue eyes once again menacingly at the man before leaving along with his brothers. 
and soon after this we end up having another time skip. As after the whole event had occurred, now Ace and Sabo as well as Luffy had firmly declared that they're now on Brothers forever, and they end up sharing a drink of sake. At that same moment though, this is when Garp ends up rushing back home and he's pissed off, as this is when he ends up bonking Sabo, Ace, and Luffy on the head and screaming at them as this is when he then slams three posters down onto the table. At this, this is when we then see the three faces of the boys on these posters, as you will see Ace, as he was currently fighting off against a pirate, Sabo, who is looking menacingly at, you know, at his father, and Luffy, whose shining blue eyes were being activated and his hair was all up in the air, as this is when they will then show their bounties. As Ace and Sabo will have a bounty of 10 million, while Luffy had a bounty of 20 million. Now, this would cause everyone to be surprised while Luffy just shrugs it off as he's actually surprised how good he looks in that photo. After that, Garp begins to scream at the boys for their reckless actions, preparing to punish them all, as he begins to throw a punch at Luffy, only for Luffy to then stop it with infinity. At this, Garp tries putting more and more pressure as he tries to use a weird trick, but this time Luffy is able to sense it this time. His body ends up moving on pure instinct alone as he's barely able to dodge the impact as it ends up slamming into the ground, causing a miniature crater into the wooden floor. Even though Luffy is sweating under the pressure that Garp is end up emitting, he still ends up firmly declaring that he doesn't care about the repercussions of his actions as he will firmly declare that he will become the next king of the pirates no matter what comes his way. At this, Garp ends up looking at Luffy for a while getting more and more pissed off but this is when Sabo and Ace will then also step up firmly declaring that they also will continue trying to achieve their dreams no matter what comes their way. And seeing that three boys were now united, Garp would then smirk internally as he begins to think that these boys are now ready for the hard life as he's got to know they're not going to be all weak and everything, too scared to actually face off against the world. But nonetheless, they were still going to get punished as he begins to chase after them, destroying everything in his path in order to make sure that all the boys get punished for their actions. And after a whole day staying there, Garp will end up leaving as he then declares to the boys that he's no longer going to train them, especially Luffy, to which Luffy wouldn't say that he doesn't need their training anymore since they were going to get stronger on their own. And after hearing that, Garp ends up smirking as he ends up leaving them, as we would then see another time skip then roll by. After this, most of the events that happened in their backstory would continue on. They eventually end up meeting the old man who is trying to build his ship, and after helping him build his ship, they are actually able to learn a few things from the man. As the man will actually help Sabo and Ace build up their strength, but after realizing that Luffy was already plenty of strong and that the boy was already showing a, a large amount of abilities, he actually decided to teach Luffy hockey in this timeline. To which Luffy, even though he fights off against multiple cursed spirits, and even though he has a lot of battle experience against like different types of creatures, he still hadn't mastered hockey just yet. But still, nonetheless, he ends up learning about it and now learning how to use it. So with that, the boys had once again grown even stronger. But thanks to these bounties though, they had gained some unnecessary attention, as many pirates that were all around just came onto the island to take the boys' bounties, thinking that it would be easy, only for them to fail since Luffy as well as the boys were way too strong for them to deal with. As finally, it would then turn to a certain day as we see Sabo now preparing to leave on his journey. After so long of spending time on this island, he decided it was finally time for him to set out to sea, to which Luffy and Ace had no choice but to agree to. And after a tearful goodbye from everyone, Sabo ends up heading out on his journey, unaware that a celestial dragon was arriving. As Luffy would then actually turn to the direction of the port where he sees a lot of people shouting and everything, he didn't activate the six eyes to see none other than a celestial dragon. Luffy, after seeing this guy, would actually instantly realize who this guy was, since after all that training that he got from Garp early on, Garp actually taught Luffy about Celestial Dragon and telling him that he needs to show them as much respect as possible, especially since he was going to become a marine. And Luffy, after realizing that that was a Celestial Dragon, already got a bad feeling from him, since he instantly starts screaming at Sabo to dodge out the way or go to a different direction, since any altercation with a Celestial Dragon doesn't mean anything good. But unfortunately for Luffy, his warning went to Death's ears, as Sabu tries to go past the Celestial Dragon ship, only for him to be blown up by the Celestial Dragon as he ends up shooting a missile at Sabo. Ace and Luffy are forced to watch this in shock, as Ace begins to scream out at Sabo's name while everyone else in the crowd just watches in horror. And Luffy, after seeing this, would be pissed off as he then suddenly ends up kicking off from the ground, and using his cursed energy to manipulate himself, he actually begins to glide off the air, rushing towards Sabo as quickly as possible. Now, thanks to Luffy's control over Chris' energy, he ends up arriving there relatively quickly as he ends up pulling Sabo out the water to see the damage that was done to him. Sabo, although he is very injured and very damaged, he still is alive, luckily. So thanks to this, Luffy ends up taking him back, relieved that his brother was safe. But as Luffy was trying to end up heading back though, 
This is when suddenly he then feels something stopped by his infinity. He ends up turning around to see a missile that was very close to his face, which luckily the infinity had stopped from connecting. As he then sees multiple other missiles then shot out, but none of them connecting thanks to his infinity. The Celestial Dragon would be pissed off as he begins to ask his men, wondering why he couldn't hit that bug, which is, you know, Luffy, to which this causes Luffy to be even more pissed off. Deciding that he had enough of this celestial scum, Luffy would then release a maximum output blue, as this would end up destroying the Celestial Dragon in his ship as everyone who was witnessing it would actually be shocked about what they just seen. As Luffy would take back Sabo's body, Ace would be there trying to check on Sabo, hoping that he was alright while tears were actually falling from his eyes, while Dan then begins to scold Luffy about what he just done since he just killed a celestial dragon, which means the entire world is going to go after him now. As Luffy looks at Ace and Sabo, not really caring about what just happened, this is when he then gets hit by a large amount of tiredness since he just used a large amount of his cursed energy. Mind you right now, Luffy is not at that Gojo level just yet. Even though he has Gojo's technique, he's still not there as he's still a child and even though he's been fighting for so long, and even though all that training he got from Garp, he still is not at that level of mastery just yet. As Luffy falls into unconsciousness, this is when we then do another time skip. You see, after the events that had occurred, Luffy went into waking up as Dan Nan as well as the rest of the Mount Band is trying to find out about what they should do, since they no longer can stay on the island anymore. Since a celestial dragon had been killed, that means an admiral would then be coming along with multiple marines as a way to hunt down anyone who had been associated with the person that killed the celestial dragon as well as the very person who killed him himself. As Luffy would actually hear all this quietly since no one has known that he woken up just yet, Luffy began to take into consideration about the things he just done and realize what he needs to do. As the next day would arrive, we will see multiple marine ships pull up on the island as well as Admiral Akainu. As Akainu would arrive on the island, he will be looking around pissed off searching for the person who killed the celestial dragon as multiple marines will be hoarding and going through people's houses as we can literally hear the people crying out in shock while many children that were in the area would be crying about everything that was going on as the marines were destroying everything and looking everywhere to find out who was the person who did it. All the while, the mountain bandits were scared since they literally see the marine ships pulling up as they can literally hear marines trying to come across the mountain. Now, as they try looking around and try to find a way to get Ace, Sabo, and Luffy, more precisely Luffy, out the way, this is when we then see Luffy end up stepping out of the bandit's hideout. This will cause them to turn to Luffy and tell him to hide since if he's here any longer, then he would eventually be hunted. But Luffy ignores them as he ends up looking at the scenery around him, as he ends up seeing all the marine ship pulling up as well as hearing the people crying and screaming. At this, Luffy realizes this was all his fault as he ends up turning back to the base to see that Ace was still over there looking after Sabo. And after realizing that if Luffy were to stay here any longer then the people he cares about would be in danger, Luffy would look at Dan Dan as well as the rest of her crew as he tells them to take Ace and Sabo and leave the area while he ends up distracting the marines. Now Dan Dan after hearing this then tells Luffy no and tries to convince him to stop but unfortunately Luffy had already made up his mind. He already put the people he cared about in danger so it's time for him to bust them out. And after Luffy ends up telling them that he actually doesn't really like bandits, but he thinks that they were cool, which causes Dan Dan and the, as well as the rest of her crew to be very emotional, Luffy then screams at them to run, to which they have no other choice. They end up bursting into the hut and try gathering all their things before end up leaving along with Ace and Sabo. Now Ace, after seeing himself and Sabo get picked up and carried away, he starts asking what was going on, only for Dan Dan to suddenly end up hitting him full force in the back of the head, knocking him out. As she ends up apologizing to Ace slowly while also letting tears fall from her eyes, as she ends up leaving Luffy there to face off against the Marines. Luffy would look at the people that he would call family and end up leaving as he would nod with a small smile on his face, as he ends up giggling a little bit of how ironic everything turned out to be while hoping that he gets to see them again in the future one day. But nonetheless, as Luffy ends up turning back to the hill, this is when the Marines would end up climbing up, and as one of the Marines ends up looking around the area only to see Luffy just standing there, this is when suddenly one of them would then actually point out that this kid was actually on a wanted poster, wanted dead or alive. This caused the marines to instantly turn to Luffy and instantly start trying to attack him, to which Luffy would actually end up releasing a blue, blowing them away, as he tells them that it was not going to be exactly that easy. After this, multiple marines after seeing Luffy just blow away a large portion of their men would then start charging at him idiotically while Luffy faces off against them by himself. Thanks to all that training from Garp as well as all the training that he got from Ace and Sabo and also the Cursed Spirits, Luffy is able to take on large portions of the marines by himself, but eventually a kind of would catch wind of someone with a bounty being on the mountain. And even though he was a fair distance away, that caused him to have enough description to the point where he actually sends a full on magma fist into the sky that was looming over the mountain entirely. 
and as Luffy was continuously taking on multiple different marines, using Infinity to stop himself from getting hurt, this is when he actually ends up feeling an intense heat then blow past him. As falling from the sky, there will be multiple amount of magma fists falling from the sky and descending upon the very hill itself. As Luffy couldn't believe it, they were going to go this far all for him? As Luffy will be forced to activate his affinity to prevent himself from getting hurt, but everything else in the vicinity was not so lucky. As marines, trees, animals, everything that was in the area will be burned down thanks to the magma fist, as people will be screaming out with some of them even dying, as Luffy will be forced there to watch it all in shock of the brutality of the marines. The one thing that was very heartbreaking to Luffy though was the fact that he wasn't able to save the base, as the very area that he's been growing up in and living a large portion of his life in was destroyed as he will see the base of the bandits now gone, as Luffy was thankful that the bandits had left the area before he went to face off against the marines. Soon after all the magma had fallen from the sky onto the mountain, Luffy would look around to see everything that he built up around here had been gone. The small miniature bases that him, Ace, and Sabo had made were gone. The base where he grew up in with the mountain bandits were gone, and all the marines that were in the area that were trying to stop him were all dead on the ground. As Luffy would look at all the destruction with a shocked look on his face, as when he then hear footsteps approaching. Realizing that more marines were coming and realizing that if they find out that he was still alive, they would do something like this, but not only just for this small little mountain, but for the entire village, this actually shook Luffy even more since there were still more people out there that he cared about. Since Dan Dan and her crew still had not left the island, as well as Makino, as well as many other people he cared about. Seeing this, Luffy had to pull off the ultimate sacrifice. As Luffy would end up walking over to the very edge of the cliff, he ended up looking around the entire area that he once called home before nodding to himself. As with a simple tear, he ends up leaving the area, using cursed energy to fly away and getting as far away from the island as possible. As marines would then pull up at the very top of the hill, and after looking at all the destruction that was caused, would then report back to Akainu saying that anyone that had a bounty at this point who will actually exist at the top of this mountain had been killed off, along with many others. And Akainu, after finding out that he did a job well done, would then nod his head in satisfaction as more marines begin to loot the area, trying to find if anyone else was still alive that may have been associated with that man, only to find out that no one had actually knew who slayed the celestial dragon. So with that being said, they decided to mark it as whoever had that bounty had been the reason why the celestial dragon had died, so now that they've taken care of the person, that means that they finally completed their task. As of that, Kaino as well as the rest of the rings would then pull away, with many others like Makino as well as Dan Dan and the rest of her crew being very traumatized about the whole event, as they could only do nothing more but hope that Luffy was safe wherever he was. As we turn our attention back to Luffy, we will see him zipping past the seas as he tries to look for an island to take a break at. Throughout this entire point, Luffy had been now at this point running low on cursed energy after taking care of those marines and after flying for a while now. And currently right now, if he were to continue using any more cursed energy, that would cause him to actually try sinking to the bottom of the sea thanks to the fact he ate a devil fruit. As Luffy went to get cursed out that dumb fruit that he ate, this is when he finally ends up spotting an island as he ends up smiling thinking that he finally found somewhere safe. But as he does though, this is when unfortunately for Luffy, he ran out. As his cursed energy has finally gone too low to the point where Luffy can no longer fly, Luffy would end up falling from the sky and soon end up crashing into the water hard, as this is when he then closed his eyes thinking that this might be the end. But as Luffy was about to sink to the very bottom of the sea, this is when suddenly an R would then reach out at Luffy and then grab him out the ocean, as the man would then look at Luffy with a shocked expression wondering how did he get here. As the man wondering this was Monkey D. Dragon. He had been on a little voyage, looking around for anything that may have been caused by the Celestial Dragon, since him and his crew had found out that Celestial Dragon was arriving at the East Blue. But to his surprise, he ends up finding out that his son was already stranded here in the middle of the ocean and literally was about to die if he had not arrived here. As he ends up instantly trying to make sure that his son is still alive, asking anyone for help, with the medic running in to try to help Luffy, you will see Luffy then suddenly wake up later on, as this is where we then do a time skip. Many years have passed by since the incident that had occurred. Luffy's whereabouts throughout the East Blue had been completely scarce as no one knew where the kid went or where he had gone to. While Luffy himself had actually met up with the Revolutionary Army as well as finally had met up with his father. Dragon and Luffy of course started off a little bit shakily since Dragon had been completely awkward about the whole thing, not really sure how to react to Luffy, while Luffy didn't even know how to react to his father, besides the fact that he was just pretty chill about the whole thing. Nonetheless, they still end up getting along with each other pretty great, as Luffy ends up spending time with the Revolutionary Army and training with them. 
The reason for this one is Dragon was very pissed off after hearing about the Celestial Dragon arriving at the island, and he was even more pissed off when he found out that his son got hunted down by marines. Now, even though he's been shot by the fact that his son killed a Celestial Dragon, he found out that his son had a good reason as the Celestial Dragon tried to kill Sabo, Luffy's brother. And of course, hearing this, this only resolves Dragon even further in his goal, as he asked for Luffy assistance in, you know, trying to take care of the Celestial Dragon as well as the Marines. But unfortunately for Dragon, Luffy was not going to be a part of it. While yes, he doesn't like Celestial Dragons and blatantly hates them, he has much more important things to care about, like his dream. And after hearing this, Dragon decided to allow Luffy to go through with it, but he does end up giving Luffy a transponder cell that was supposed to contact him whenever Luffy was truly in danger, whenever he needed assistance as the revolutionary army was actually behind Luffy, as whenever he needed help he can call them up. As we now turn to the end of the time skip, you see Luffy then set out on his journey. Finally after spending so much time at the revolutionary army, getting trained by them, and getting to know his father, Luffy tells them that it was finally time for him to go look for his own crew and go for his own adventures. He even asked them to drop him off at the East Blue, since he didn't want any shortcuts when it comes to his journey of becoming the Pirate King. And with that, they decide to agree with his wishes as they drop him off at the East Blue, giving him a small little ship for him to you know, travel on as well as some food and everything. And with that, Luffy ends up waving goodbye at the Revolutionary Army as he ends up telling them that he would talk with them once in a while, with them of course agreeing as well. As with that, we have Luffy saying goodbye to his father in the Revolutionary Army and it was finally time for him to continue on with his pirate journey. As this is where we now kick off with the main timeline. Throughout this entire travel, Luffy actually maintains his ship and doesn't get stranded on a barrel. As when he's continuing on his journey, he ends up encountering Alvita's ship as they are currently right now stealing another ship from another person. Luffy after seeing this decides to help out, as when Alvita ends up spotting Luffy, she orders her men to attack him only for them all to fall. As Alvita being caught off guard by this would then see Luffy then kick her away, sending her flying out of the ship and this ends up freeing Kobe who is currently still stuck under Alvita's leadership. Soon after this, Kobe then begs Luffy to come along with him as he wants to be a marine, to which Luffy, although he's very questionable about the kid, then decides to let him tag along. As this is where we then see a lot of key events begin to occur. Luffy ends up stopping at Shell Town and after dealing with Hamelpo and Axe Morgan, he ends up adding Zoro onto his crew. Except in this timeline, Zoro actually tries to fight Luffy in this one since he seems interested in Luffy's strength, only for him not being able to do a single thing to the boy. Kobe also ends up joining the marine at this point after thanking Luffy a lot along with the rest of the town, Luffy ends up leaving Shelltown. After this, we also get the Orange Town arc as this is when Luffy ends up meeting Nami, who will temporarily join the crew as she so called states, as after that the trio will then fight off against Buggy as well as the rest of his crew, with Buggy end up getting defeated by Luffy as well. And this will not be the only person defeated by Luffy. As the Sierra Village arc, the Baratue arc, all those different arcs where the Straw Hats are joining, Luffy ends up defeating all the main villains. For Sierra Village, we have Luffy defeating Captain Kuro. For the Baratue arc, we have Luffy defeating Don Krieg. And even for the Arlong Park arc, we have Luffy defeating Arlong. And throughout all these occurrences, we have Luffy build up his main crew. As you see Zoro, Nami, Usopp, Sanji, every single one of them joining his crew. But thanks to Luffy's crew getting built up and Luffy defeating all these main villains, Luffy's attention in the East Blue and all around the world would actually begin to spread as, they, as Luffy's old bounty would then resurface. As Luffy's old bounty of being 20 million would then change to being 70 million, with the attention to Luffy continuously begin to build up. But the thing is, even though Luffy is really strong at this point, that doesn't mean that every enemy that he faces off against will be easy, as he would then face off against Smoker back in Logtown. But unfortunately for Luffy, he would have a much harder time compared to the rest of the villains. Which although Luffy was way stronger in this timeline and way stronger than Smoker, the real problem was the fact that techniques such as Blue or any of his curse attacks were not really doing anything to Smoker unless he fused Hockey into it. And even though Luffy was decently able to use Hockey, he was still not complete mastery level just yet. So each time he would use it, it would sometimes be off and on, as Luffy would try to force it out most of the time. But still nonetheless, they still had to go their different ways, since Luffy ends up escaping from Smoker and continues on his journey to the Grand Line. As this is where we also get the pledge from the Straw Hats, as each and every single one of them then make their vows to achieve their dreams. As after that, they end up smashing the barrel together and they'll continue on with their journey. Another thing that I forgot to mention is that thanks to Luffy's bounty resurfacing as well as an older Luffy picture being placed on it, that means everyone that didn't know if Luffy had been alive ever since the East Blue incident now knew that Luffy was alive and this actually caused many of them to be happy. 
Makino was of course like shedding tears of joy at the fact that Luffy was still alive and well while Dan Dan as well as the rest of her crew were just cheering in delight that they know that Luffy was still here with them. So with that, Luffy would continue on with his journey, and he would continue facing off against different enemies as we enter the Alabasta Saga. As Luffy would arrive at Reverse Mountain where he sees Labu hitting his head on the generous red line, and due to this, Luffy after having a little bit of a heart to heart moment with Labu and fighting off against it, Luffy ends up making Labu a promise saying that he will return, and this causes Labu to stop damaging itself. Another thing to take note of as we do end up meeting Mr. Nine and Miss Wednesday, but luckily they end up escaping from the Straw Hats as they do not want any altercations with them or in knowing who Luffy was and actually were pretty fearful of him. Since his bounty was skyrocketing and when they were actually in front of his presence, they could literally feel the aura that he was emitting. So this caused them to try leaving the area as quickly as possible as we now turn to the Whiskey Peak arc. And as they go to the Whiskey Peak arc, you will see the crew end up enjoying themselves with the townspeople and to find out later on that every single one of them were bounty hunters, working for Brooks Works. But in all good fashion, Luffy and his crew is able to take care of it, as Zoro would actually be able to take care of all of it by himself. And that's even including Mr. Five and Miss Valentine. And the main reason for this one was because of the fact that Zoro in this timeline was actually growing stronger along with the rest of the crew. Thanks to Luffy taking care of all the main villains with ease and even taking care of Logia users, they realized that Luffy was on a different level than all of them. And this caused many of the Straw Hats to push themselves in getting stronger, with Zoro actually helping them all, including training himself as well. So this makes the Straw Hats grow even stronger than they were in, in the main timeline. So after taking care of all the hunters, this is when the Straw Hats then confront Vivi, to which she ends up explaining everything that's been going on. And after this, Luffy then decides to help out the kingdom, with Nami of course charging a ridiculous amount of prices in exchange for helping her. And soon after this, we also see the Straw Hats stop at Little Garden, as well as Drum Island, as this is where we end up getting introduced to Chopper. And soon after Chopper's help as well as Dr. Kuda, Nami ends up recovering from the disease while Luffy and Chopper actually get along with each other, to the point where Chopper actually wants to join Luffy's crew. And after a little bit of a conflict between Kuraha and after Luffy ends up saving the Drum Island, Chopper ends up joining Luffy's crew as his next member. And after this, it was finally time for the true Alabasta arc, as we see Luffy and his crew arrive at Alabasta, ready to take care of Crocodile. As we see Luffy and his crew go through a majority of the Alabaster arc, and most of it remaining the same, as Luffy and his crew will face many different challenges as well as shenanigans at Alabasta. Along the way, Luffy actually ends up meeting with a familiar face as he ends up meeting with Ace, which ends up leading into a very emotional moment between the two brothers. Ace had thought that Luffy had passed away and abandoned them all when he was meant to stay there with them, and Luffy of course felt really bad since he had to leave his brothers in order to protect them. But nonetheless, after that very wholesome moment go by, this is when Ace actually offered Luffy a spot on Whitebeard's crew as that still had remained the same. As in this timeline, Ace had grown even stronger than he was in canon. After losing Luffy and after Sabo got injured, Ace had trained himself vigorously hard to make sure something like that would never happen again under his watch. And after many years had gone by and it was finally time for him to go to the sea, he really showed all that work had played off as after that he began to take on against many different enemies of the seas and would be able to face off against them. To the point where he's even able to face off against enemies that are at Grand Line level, if not New World level. But eventually, Ace would then encounter Whitebeard's crew, and that's where he actually stops and decides to join them as the Second Division Commander. As now that we're all caught up with Ace, we see Ace and Luffy spend a small little moment together in Alabasta, with Luffy's crew getting introduced to Ace, and after a small little wacky shenanigans between the two of them, it'll be finally time for Ace to go his separate ways with Luffy since he was hunting after Blackbeard. And after this, Ace ends up giving Luffy his VV card, and after that, he ends up leaving, with Luffy waving goodbye, happy to see his brother again, and this time alive and stronger. After this, they go through the rest of Alabasta, pretty much the same way they do in canon, until finally encountering Crocodile. At this, Luffy ends up encountering Crocodile at the Rain Diner's Casino, and by now, Crocodile has caught wind of Luffy. And similar to the main timeline, Crocodile ends up capturing Luffy, the rest of his crew, along with Smoker and uh, Tagashi. But unfortunately, Luffy is still affected by the sea prism, but not as much as before as he uses cursed energy to override his weakness as he forces himself to break out of the cuffs. This ends up shocking Crocodile, as this is when Luffy then releases a blue, destroying the cage as Crocodile has no choice but to literally move as he barely dodges the blue as it destroys the area in front of it. Luffy orders his crew to go on ahead as he decides to take care of Crocodile here and now, since right now they have to stop a civil war from happening in Alabasta. And although Luffy's crew is very reluctant, they have no choice but to follow their captain's orders. And as Tagashi tries to step in and try to capture both Crocodile and Luffy, Smoker then stops her, telling her that it would be wise that they follow Luffy's instruction and leave. As even though he hated to listen to Luffy at this very moment, 
they had no choice. As if they were to stick around here and fight, then shoot, even Smoker is not very confident that he can keep up with the two of them. Especially since it will be two against one. So with no other choice, Tagashi and Smoker end up leaving, and this ends up leaving Luffy to fight off against Crocodile. And although the fight is pretty intense actually, as Luffy actually gets a little bit injured in this one. Although Luffy is way stronger than he was in canon, as well as he now has access to hockey, the very thing is that now Crocodile is taking Luffy way more serious than he did in the main timeline. This is not resulting in Luffy taking a little bit more damage since he's not having Infinity active all the time, trying to make sure to get some blows in on Crocodile. And this gives Crocodile enough opening to the point where he's able to manipulate his sand to the point where he actually ends up striking Luffy. And even though Luffy gets cuts here and there, he keeps on fighting to the point where he's actually able to beat up Crocodile. And he ends up beating Crocodile with a powerful curse, energy, and fueled punch, along with Hockey into the stomach, causing Crocodile to take massive damage and knocking him out cold. As this is where we then introduce to Robin, who ends up arriving at the scene, expecting to see Crocodile just fine, if not a little bit pissed off, only to see that he was knocked out by Luffy. As Luffy would turn his blue eyes onto her, as she ends up getting a little bit fearful and stepping away from Luffy, as she feels waves of negative energy just falling out of him, this is when Luffy then turns off his six eyes as he then smirks, telling her that, you know, he just had a little bit of an altercation here and he's gonna leave it to her to clean it up, as this is when he ends up leaving the area, with Crocodile now being defeated. With Robin being just stuck there, shocked about what just had occurred, as she turns to Luffy interested, while repeating his name. And soon after this, we see Luffy now returning back to his crew, using cursed energy to fly back to them. And after a little bit of a harsh journey, they end up arriving back at the very capital of Alabasta, and end up giving the command that now it was over. They end up proving the king's innocence, and this ends up stopping the civil war. Crocodile is eventually captured by Smoker as well as the rest of the marines, and as soon as they end up reporting this to the rest of the marines, they have no choice but to put out a higher bounty on Luffy, with Luffy's bounty in this timeline now being 170 million. But there will be more, as in this timeline we also see Zoro and Sanji's bounty appear in this timeline. As Zoro's bounty would also be way higher than it was in the main timeline, as by now his bounty would actually be as Luffy's starting bounty, when in the main timeline this being 50 million, and Sanji's being, unfortunately, 45 million. This ends up pissing off Sanji as he ends up declaring that he won't lose to Ma's head, with Zoro just egging on Sanji every single time. This ends up leading to the two of them fighting in a comedic way, but nonetheless, the story continues on. Now, by now, the Marines, as well as many other pirate crews, turn their attention onto the Straw Hats, and realizing that they're going to continue growing as a threat, they begin to try making precautions for them. As after this, we will see the Straw Hats have no choice but to leave Alabasta, as we also get that tearful goodbye from Vivi, as the Straw Hats would then bring up their arms to reveal that she was still a part of the crew, even though she was far away from them. Now, this is where we then turn to the Sky Island Saga. We actually find out that Robin decided to tag along with the Straw Hats and hopped on their ship, so they decides to join her, she, is, she decides to join them as the archaeologists. And with Robin joining them, we also get them finding out about Sky Island and decide to go to the Dreamless City known as Mock Town in order to find any information about it. And when they arrived, the increase of Luffy's bounty had actually been heard of in this timeline, in this part of the of the Grand Line, and due to that, many of them were really scared of Luffy. Even Bellamere, who in the rain timeline began to make fun of Luffy had actually instead now been completely scared of the guy to the point where he doesn't even approach him. As this would not even ask for any information about Sky Island, to which it causes the many people at the bar to start laughing only for Luffy to then flash them the blue eyes, as he starts asking them what was funny. This causes many of them to start tensing up as they are fearing, fearing for their lives, with many of them even beginning to pray a little bit since they don't want to be slaughtered by Luffy. And after asking everyone about Sky Island and finding no information, as many of them straight out declare that Sky Island doesn't exist, this causes the Straw Hats to leave the area. But this is when Luffy ends up encountering Blackbeard. As he ends up taking the appearance of the man, he instantly had a bad feeling about that guy. Except it wasn't really a guy, it was more of a day, actually. But besides that, we now move on with the story. Eventually, after multiple events end up occurring, as Bellamy as well as the rest of his crew decide to get back at the Straw Hats for making them seem weak, so they decide to steal the treasure from one of their, best, one of their new friends, this being Cricket. Now, Luffy ends up getting it back in blood, as he ends up defeating Bellamy as well as the rest of his crew, not really caring about the repercussions of his actions. As afterwards, he ends up taking the treasure back, and soon him and his crew end up going to Sky Island. Now, the rest of the Sky Pia saga would not really change much from the main timeline, since Luffy and his crew still go through many challenges throughout this arc. As when it was finally time for Luffy to face off against Anel, that's where things are going to make a little bit of a change. As in this timeline, Luffy ends up defeating Anel with no issue at all. Thanks to his Delfu, Anel's abilities had no chance against Luffy, and even when he tried using it in different ways like making his golden spear having a lot of heat, 
Luffy was able to activate Infinity to stop the attack from hitting him. So due to this, Nell ends up losing to Luffy as well, which ends up leading to the end of the Skypiea saga. As Luffy and his crew end up getting rewarded for their hard work, as well as them stealing a lot of gold from Sky Island, they'll then return back on their travels, which ends up leading to the Water 7 saga. As the beginning of the saga starts off pretty lighthearted, as the Straw Hats were just enjoying themselves on their simple voyage. Now in this timeline, Foxy the Silver Fox does not encounter the Straw Hats, so he does not challenge them to a debut back fight. As well as the fact that he's trying to openly avoid the Straw Hats since he was actually afraid that Luffy was going to tear him apart. But back to the Straw Hats, as they were continuing on with their travels, they actually spot a small miniature island and decide to stop by there to get a little bit of goods for their ship, since they were running low on it. But when they stop by though, this is when suddenly a bunch of sea creatures try to attack the island, which results in the Straw Hats try to take action. But before they do though, this is when suddenly Admiral Aokiji would then step in, as this is when he then shocks everyone by freezing all the beasts that were trying to attack the island, as he would end up freezing them all in an instant. This would cause many people who were actually living on the island to cheer for Aokiji, thanking him for his help, while the Straw Hats would be watching all that in shock. But this is when Luffy would then suddenly end up declaring in a very serious tone that everyone is to get back on the ship immediately. At this, the Straw Hats would turn to Luffy and to their surprise, he wasn't smiling any longer. Which was weird since whenever Luffy was with his crew, he would always smile with them, since anything that was possibly a threat to them he could take care of. But now, Luffy was serious. As this is when suddenly Aokiji would then turn to Luffy and his crew, as Luffy then screams at them to head out now. But before the crew can leave though, this is when Aokiji was already in front of them, shocking everyone. Luffy was also caught off guard at this since he couldn't even see him, even with the six eyes activated. At this Luffy turns to the Admiral shocked as he then gets into a fighting position along with Zoro and Sanji. But this is when Aokiji would then disappear and appear in front of Robin, shocking all the Straw Hats once again as he ends up telling Robin that she can no longer hide from her past, before suddenly freezing her entirely. Everyone in the Straw Hats would be there traumatized, with Luffy crying out to Robin, with her not responding. Being pissed off, this is when Luffy would then release a blue, destroying Aokiji entirely as he ends up ordering the rest of the crew to take Robin back, even Zoro and Sanji. And even though Zoro and Sanji were very reluctant, they had no choice but to follow Luffy's orders as he was the captain, and he was no longer playing around. So with no other choice, the crew end up leaving as this is when Aokiji then reforms. He ends up telling Luffy that that was a pretty good shot, but internally he was actually making up multiple different contingency plans for Luffy. The main reason for this one was pretty simple. Luffy almost killed Aokiji in this very moment. If Luffy had actually put a little bit more concentration as well as put more focus on where he was aiming at Aokiji, he could have absorbed him completely into the blue and prevent him from being reformed, killing off an admiral right then and there. With Luffy staring at Aokiji and actually showing that he actually knew he could have killed him, smiling and saying that don't worry, next time I'll make sure it counts. As with that, we will then see the fight between Aokiji and Luffy. To which unfortunately for Luffy, he was not at this stage just yet. As the fight between them would go on, Luffy would slowly begin to get overwhelmed, as his infinity would be active throughout most of the time but he had to turn it off here and there to land a blow on Aokiji. And unlike Gojo at this point, he doesn't have the automatic defense set up just yet. So he had to activate Infinity manually, which gave Aokiji a lot of opportunities to attack Luffy. Nonetheless, Luffy kept on fighting and everything and his control over Haki began to get better and better as he's actually able to land blows on Aokiji in this timeline. But unfortunately for Luffy, as he continues fighting Aokiji, Aokiji will seize an opportunity as he sees Luffy's Infinity now down. And due to this, he ends up freezing Luffy's arm entirely. As Luffy would be caught off guard by this, he would also see the ice extending all the way to his legs as well as now half of Luffy's body is frozen. At this Luffy tries to fight off against the code but it's barely being effective and he tries to use Haki to break through it. And seeing this, Aokiji acknowledges Luffy's strength, saying that he will grow stronger if he were to let him continue, as this is when Aokiji begins to debate on whether or not he should let him live. Seeing this, Luffy realized that now his life was in the balance, and the last time something like this happened was when he almost drowned, and there was no way he was going to go through something like that again. So concentrating as much curse energy as he can into his arms, this is when Luffy would suddenly burst through the ice, as this is when he then lands a powerful blow onto Aokiji's stomach, but this blow was out of the ordinary, as this is when Luffy then uses his six eyes to then see it. As instead of the normal blue and black energy that curse energy releases whenever he attacks with it, it was now a black and red, as this is when we then find out that Luffy had unleashed a black flash. As this black flash was so powerful, it caused Aokiji to be sent flying, crashing through multiple trees as he's literally almost falling unconscious because of the blow. He even coughs up blood as this blow was also infused with hockey, allowing it to actually hit his Logia body. 
As we turned to Aokiji once again getting sent flying and hitting a bunch of trees, he had taken a generous amount of damage from the blow, but somehow was still able to get up, although he was coughing up a larger amount of blood. At this, Luffy seeing this would instantly get into a battle position, ready to fight off against Aokiji, only for him to once again get surprised as Aokiji would then appear in front of Luffy once again. Luffy being way too slow to activate his infinity, he would then see Aokiji then place a hand directly on his face. And seeing this, Luffy would freeze up as Aokiji would then give Luffy some parting words. He tells Luffy that he's strong, way stronger than he expected. And he tells Luffy that even though he is strong, he's going to have to get way stronger since in this world, there's going to be people that are way stronger than him all the time. And that if he wants to make sure to keep his crew as well as Robin around, he needs to be strong enough to face off against those challenges. While also saying that the next time they meet, he won't be as merciful. As that was the last thing Luffy would be able to see and hear as is when he then gets frozen completely. Luckily by now, Sanji and Zoro would arrive at the scene to see Luffy now completely frozen as they instantly go to attack Aokiji only for him to dodge out the way. As even though he was injured, he was still an admiral for a reason. He looks at the two guys, telling them that they have a good captain before he decides to leave them alone, leaving them there with Luffy. As Zoro and Sanji, although they were very pissed off, they had no choice but to focus on their captain as they take Luffy back in order to heal him. At this, Chopper would also see Luffy as well as the rest of the crew and they would all be surprised about what happened to Luffy since to them Luffy was just unbeatable. He was this person that no matter what enemy they came across, they always believed that he would be able to take care of. So this was the very first time they ever seen Luffy beat him. But nonetheless, they get to defrosting Luffy as after this, Robin and Luffy needed an entire day to rest. As when that day finally rolled around, it was finally the next day, the crew began to have a discussion about what they should do next, with Luffy being the one to come to a decision. After that encounter with Aokiji, Luffy had gotten an eye awakening moment, as he realized that there are many people in this world that could actually still face off against him. And Luffy, although he didn't like to admit it, he had gotten arrogant. You see, from all the training that he got at a young age, as well as all the battles that he had fought, Luffy had thought that there was barely anyone in this world that could actually keep up with him. I mean, after all, he had cursed energy, he had hockey, he had his infinity, there was not really, there's not really much people can do against all that. But yet, here it was, that Luffy was proven wrong when he was facing off against an admiral. This caused Luffy to reevaluate everything, as this is when he then firmly declares to the team that they're going to have to stay on this island. As if there's more enemies like that in this world, then they're going to have to all get stronger in order to face off against them. And although they wondered about how they're going to get stronger, they still agreed nonetheless with Luffy since he was their captain, so they decided to put their trust onto him. As this is where we now have a three month time skip. Throughout those three months, Luffy begins to teach them all the fundamentals of hockey training. As well, at the same time, he also began to train himself using his cursed energy. Luffy still felt like there was more he could do with cursed energy, and after that black flash, he felt like he got even more levels of understanding with it. So due to this, he began to train with it even further, to the point where he actually ends up unlocking the reverse curse energy, a way for him to heal himself. Although he did try applying it to others, this felt miserably since he had no control over that, so he wasn't able to heal others, only himself. But still nonetheless, it was still a great feat for him as this also allowed him to awaken a new curse technique. Reverse curse technique. Model Red. As the technique was pretty similar to blue except instead of sucking everyone in and crushing them, it blew away everyone. But Luffy was not the only one getting stronger as all the Straw Hats were also getting stronger as well. As thanks to their training with Hockey from Luffy as well as the strength training that they built up thanks to Luffy, this allowed the Straw Hats to be way stronger than they were in canon. And after spending so much time on this island, the Straw Hats also got closer to the point where they're even, they're even able to call each other family. To the point where Robin is even able to explain her little secret as well as her past, which caused many of the Straw Hats to be pissed off about the Marines as they decide that they're going to help her when the time comes. As after this, we now turn to when the Straw Hats are now going to get Mary fixed, although they all made an agreement that if Mary is not being able to get fixed, then they're going to have to replace her. And although it did take a lot of time for Usopp to deal with that, he did eventually accept this. So when they end up getting to Water 7, they end up ready to part with Mary as we don't get that generous fight between Usopp and Luffy as they already did fight a lot during the, during the time on the island so that was still good and clear. But nonetheless, as their time in Water 7 begins to go well spent as they were spending time trying to find out what boat they should buy for the Mary, this is when we actually end up finding out about the Frankie squad as well as the fact that CP9, the assassination group, had decided to start making their way to Robin. But Robin, instead of the main timeline where she just vanishes off with them, she instead fights back against them saying that she's not going to go with them, which causes them to try to fight her. Now luckily in this timeline, Robin is way stronger as she's able to actually keep up with them decently well, but not, not enough to the point where she's actually able to beat all members. But this is when Chopper then comes in as he then begins to help out Robin in, in attacking the CP members, 
but sooner or later they begin to get overwhelmed to the point where Chopper then gets knocked out as Robin ends up getting captured. And not only that, but soon afterwards Frankie also ends up getting captured. Now Chopper, after finally waking up from the beating that he got, would then report this back to Luffy, which angers him as well as the rest of the crew. So with that, they begin to form a squad in order to get Robin back, and they begin to do just that. Unfortunately, they're not able to take the Mary with them since Mary is still recovering from all the damage she got from the rest of their travels, but nonetheless, they still go after Robin, soon getting on the train and soon end up going after her. So their travels to get back to Robin will remain the same as they continue tracking down the train of CP9 until they eventually arrive at Eni's lobby. Now when they arrive at Eni's lobby, it is go time as the Straw Hats waste no time but to start ravaging and destroying everything around the place. Luffy ends up releasing a blue around the entire area, destroying a large amount of the well, a large amount of the place as well as a large amount of the marines as well. As they begin to report back to the leader saying that Monkey D. Luffy as well as the rest of his crew are just going crazy out there. Now the leader after hearing this then tells them to slow Luffy down, but it turns out to be pointless as Luffy as well as the rest of his crew are not going to stop anytime soon until they get Robin back. And Robin after hearing all this and after seeing everything that was happening will actually begin to tear up as she smiles knowing that she actually had finally gotten a family. Now soon after finally being done wreaking havoc, we see Luffy then arrive to meet Bruno, one of the members of the CP9, as he then claims that he's the weakest one. But Luffy doesn't even look at Bruno at all as he is more focused on the rest of the group that was watching through the window. And Bruno, seeing that Luffy was not paying attention to him, tries to attack him, only for him to then soon die by Luffy, as Luffy just releases a maximum output blue on Bruno, not even fighting him. As the rest of the CP9 would watch all this in shock, Rob Lucci then stands up, as this is when they then burst out the window and then suddenly appear, like looming over Luffy on a different building. As this is when the leader of the CP9 then steps out, as he tells and declares Luffy that this will be his grave, with Luffy looking at every single one of them and saying otherwise. Now by that point, this is when the other Straw Hats would then arrive as well, as every single one of them were deeming a serious look on their face. When they arrive there, this is when we then see the horrors pull up in this entire arc, as we see the Straw Hats then staring down at Robin before declaring that they're going to save her. At the same time, we also see Usopp then release his new weapon, as this time unfortunately we do not get Soga King's appearance in this one, I don't know where that guy went off to, but instead we got Usopp, and this man Usopp is deeming both Soga King's weapon in this timeline, as Soga King has finally acknowledged Usopp a brave warrior of the sea and decided to give him the weapon. As Luffy would then tell Usopp to use that weapon to shoot down the flag, declaring war on the war government. Now this will terrify the leader as he ends up backing away before telling the rest of CP9 to, to take care of the Straw Hats, as he would then take Robin along with him. But Luffy and the rest of the crew seeing this would then get angry as this is when they then kick off their ledge, jumping all the way across the other building without any assistance, as this is when they all stared down at each one of their respective opponents in the CP9 fight. And similar to the main timeline, the Straw Hats end up winning this fight, but the big difference here is the fact that Luffy as well as the rest of them have a much easier time in doing so. Thanks to all that train they got and they were able to take care of the CP9 members with mid difficulty. As when Luffy fights Rob Lucci, instead of taking him down with gear 2nd, Luffy instead uses both blue and red, as he ends up just barraging him with multiple attacks of red and blue, and this causes Rob Lucci not being able to keep up. So with that, Rob Lucci ends up falling down in defeat to Luffy, the Buster Call still ends up happening with the Straw Hats being able to stop the leader before he ends up attacking Robin, and then being able to save Robin and Frankie before suddenly end up escaping with the Mary. This unfortunately ends up leading to the Mary's demise as she ends up dying, causing the Straw Hats to all cry, but thankfully they're able to move on. Soon afterwards, they end up getting a little bit of a break as the Sunny was now currently being built, and due to this, they needed a little bit of time to relax. Now, the same events like ha that happened in canon will happen in this one, as Luffy's bounty would shot up once again, but this time instead of being 300 uh, million, he would instead have 400 million. And the rest of the Straw Hats would also get a generous bounty increase as well. But there's also the point where we see Luffy and Garp reunite with each other, with Garp scolding Luffy about all his actions, and you know, giving him the fist of love and everything, with Luffy just taking it all, not really caring about the repercussions of his actions. Soon after this, this is when they actually end up finding out that Luffy, Luffy's father is actually Dragon. Well, Luffy already admitting that he actually came across him and that's how he got so strong. Now, this ends up surprising Garp as well as the rest of Luffy's crew, since Garp did not know that Luffy actually met Dragon. But nonetheless, he tells Luffy that from now on, things were only going to get tougher for him, and that he needs to prepare for those troubles up ahead. With Luffy firmly declaring that no matter, no matter what comes his way, he'll be ready to face it head on, along with the rest of his crew. 
And after hearing this, Garp ends up chuckling, calling Luffy a troublesome brat. As this is where we also find out that Kobe, as well as Himepo, had actually really grown a lot as they've been training under Garp and actually gotten higher rankings in the Marines. As we soon see the Marines leaving. After hearing all that Garp had just said, this caused the Straw Hats to look at Luffy, as Luffy would nod at them once again as they realized that they need to get even stronger. So with that, they decided to train even further while they wait for the Sunny to get fixed up entirely. As by the time the Sunny had been completely improved, it would actually be apparent that Frankie ends up joining the crew, as a, after a little bit of convincing from Robin, as well as the rest of the crew, he ends up joining them, as after that, it was finally time for them to set sail. They do have a little bit of trouble with Garp, as he ends up trying to, you know, crush the newly built Sunny, but nonetheless, they're able to escape thanks to Frankie's hard work. As now, this is where we then enter the, thrill, the Thriller Bark Saga. Now, not gonna lie to you, this arc has no change at all, as the Straw Hats throughout this entire point of the arc have been training really hard. Even Frankie has been included, and even though he's still relatively new, he has taken the training, and thanks to this, he's also way stronger than he was in canon. As when they arrive at Thriller Bark, they also end up meeting Brooke, who actually has a pretty good encounter with the Straw Hats, and honestly gets along with every single one of them. But unfortunately, he's still after his shadow in this timeline. And Luffy, after hearing that Brooke needs help, decides to help him, with the rest of the Straw Hats agreeing. As after that, the rest of Thriller Bark is just them helping out Brooke, until eventually it will be finally time to face off against Gekko Moria, another warlord of the sea. Now, Luffy is similar in this timeline helping out and defeating Gekko Moria, but this time he actually ends up unleashing a new technique. Now, this technique, Luffy still has no idea how he even discovered it, but all he felt was like a bunch of words end up getting whispered into his mind, as this one he then says the words on pure instinct alone. As this one he then activates his domain expansion, Unlimited Void. Gekko Moria will be hit by this technique as he's overrided by all the information to the point where he ends up feasing at the mouth and becomes totally brain dead. As by the time he was on the ground unconscious, it was now over for him. But nonetheless, everyone that didn't have their shadows back would then gain it after Gekko Moria is defeated, and this is when they actually end up meeting up with Kuma for the first time. Well, the rest of the Straw Hats, not Luffy. Now, when Luffy ends up seeing Kuma, he's actually very excited as it's been a while since he's seen his friend, since Kuma was always super nice to Luffy and always helped him whenever he got injured. But this is when Luffy then stops as he sees Kuma act differently. He was completely expressionless. At this, Luffy begins to ask Kuma about what happened, to which Kuma is not able to say anything before suddenly he ends up speaking to Luffy, telling Luffy about all the events that occurred, his little deal with the world government, and this breaks Luffy's heart. Kuma tells Luffy the reason why he was here, as well as he also tells Luffy that he needs to completely watch himself from now on, as by now he was under the watch of the world government now that he has defeated Gekko Moria, and from now on they're really going to be sending their heavy hitters at, at him, to which Luffy then firmly declares to bring it on, to which Kuma actually ends up releasing a small smile. And seeing that smile, Luffy ends up getting sad once again after remembering Kuma's fate, as he tells Kuma that he's going to help break him out of it, and that he's going to put a stop to the world government and also become king of the pirates at the same time. And seeing this, Kuma ends up looking at Luffy, actually shocked by what he said, but nonetheless smiles, thanking Luffy for that. As after that, the Straw Hats end up leaving Thriller Bark, this time with Brooke being a new member, and not only that, but Nami still ends up getting the Vivi card for her big mom. As this is where we then enter the Summit War Saga. As the beginning of the saga starts off with Sabaori. Now this arc is not changing at all. As this is where we then get introduced to a lot of people in this arc. We get introduced to the Supernovas, which are the worst of the worst, with Sanji actually being included in this brigade. We also get introduced to many others who actually end up becoming friends with the Straw Hats, which ends up leading to some complication as this is when we then find out that Kami, who was actually a friend of the Straw Hats and was actually guiding them throughout Sabaori, had been captured and taken to an auction house. And hearing this, the Straw Hats try to get to the auction house to stop Kami from being sold. And when the Straw Hats arrive at the area, this is when they then see Hachan then suddenly end up getting shot by Celestial Dragon as he had been there, as he had been there to try to protect Kami, but had failed miserably. As he was now currently beating on the ground, he'd be telling the Straw Hats not to interfere since as they do, uh, that means an Admiral would then be called upon them. And in seeing this, Luffy then remembers the incident that happened many years ago, as he makes a vow that he's not going to let that happen again. So with that thought in mind, Luffy then looks at the rest of the Straw Hats before apologizing, saying that he's going to have to be selfish. Which, after hearing this, the Straw Hats then look at Luffy before shrugging, telling him that he's always been selfish, but they still follow him nonetheless. And after hearing this, Luffy ends up smirking at them, as this is when he ends up walking towards the Celestial Dragon. As the Celestial Dragon was bouncing all around, 
This is when Luffy would then suddenly end up putting his hands up as the tip of his finger would then form a blue, as he ends up shooting it at the Celestial Dragon with maximum output. As the Celestial Dragon then turns to the blue, he would then be surprised as he would then be crushed to death in front of everyone, as everyone would watch the display in shock with Hachan then screaming out no since he knew that his friends were now going to be in danger. At this, Luffy looks at everyone as he's like, who's next? Which causes everyone around to start screaming and start running away. Even the person who was trying to sell Kami would be running away as well, not wanting to get mixed up with that. As we see the rest of the Celestial Dragons that were there see what Luffy did, and they instantly begin to fire at Luffy with multiple gunshots. But the thing is, Luffy's infinity was active, and not only that, but he was ignoring them, like they weren't even worth his attention. As he ends up arriving in front of Kami, he ends up giving her a smile, telling her that everything was going to be fine. As he ends up punching the glass, destroying it entirely, freeing Kami from the, from the generous bowl. As after that, he then destroys the chain, thanks to Haki, freeing Kami entirely as the celestial dragons keep firing at him. Finally having enough of their nonsense, this is when Luffy then looks at Zoro before giving him a signal to end them. To which Zoro seeing this with a nod with a smile on his face as he cuts the celestial dragons, killing them off. All the while, the rest of Luffy's crew would be there with a serious expression on their face, as even though they knew that something bad was going to happen to them, they still faced it nonetheless, as they were willing to straight up go to war with, for their friends, and killing a celestial dragon was nothing to them. And seeing all this, Kami and Hachan and all of them were just pretty emotional about the whole thing, staying in the straw hats while Rayleigh ends up walking out as well. He ends up looking at Luffy and already understanding that this kid had something. He could literally sense Luffy's potential just from standing right there, as he ends up destroying the collar that was also around his neck as well as around many others, telling him all to run away. As just when the rest of the people that are about to be sold run away, this is when you would then hear a, loud, a loudspeaker from the marines outside as they demand for Luffy to get out here. With Luffy just shrugging, telling the rest of the crew to go to the boat while he decides to take care of the rest of the marines for some fun. Kid as well as Law that were there would actually be surprised and everything and actually be pretty shooken up by Luffy. Not because of the fact that he had the balls to kill Celestial Dragon. Okay, maybe a little bit, but no, but mostly because of the fact of the pressure that he was emitting. As the boy was just emitting confidence and strength to the point where it actually made them kind of feel envious of him. As Luffy would end up walking out of the hut, this is when he ends up seeing himself surrounded by all marines from all side, as he will be bombarded by a bunch of gunshots and cannons to which he ends up stopping it all with his infinity. As this is where we then see Luffy end up looking at the marines with a smug expression on his face, as this is when he ends up releasing a red. As this, one, as this will cause all the marines that were in the area to be blown away and sent flying very far from the auction house, as this will give Luffy, as well as the rest of his crew, an opportunity to escape. Seeing that the Celestial Dragons were now killed and seeing that the fact that the person who did it was running away, this is when they would then begin to release the pacifist, as they begin to cause havoc around the entire area of Sabaudi. As we turn to see Luffy and his crew now making a getaway to their ship though, this is when a pacifist would then stand in front of them and Luffy leading the charge would be able to smash right through it, but this is when multiple others would then appear as well. Cursing, Luffy would then order everyone to attack on sight, to which they would all do so, and this will cause this will actually show the strength of the Straw Hats, as every single one of them are actually able to take care of a pacifist easily. As all the Straw Hats will be smiling at their success, feeling happy with their accomplishments, as they will soon arrive at the Sunny. Now when they see the Sunny, they're actually happy about how everything turned out, since they thought it was going to be way worse, but unfortunately for them, this would just seem way too easy as this is when suddenly Kizaru would then appear right in front of them. He tries kicking at Luffy, trying to stop him, only for Luffy to dodge out the way and try sweep kicking him, to which he ends up, you know, completely missing, as Kizaru would end up backflipping away. After backflipping away, Kizaru then looks at all the Straw Hats before telling them that he's not going to let them leave so easily, to which all the Straw Hats are of course tensing up. But this is when Luffy then tells them to go on ahead, as he tells them that he's going to be able to deal with this, which causes Zoro and Sanji to look at Luffy surprised before shaking their head and declaring that they wouldn't. After the last time that Luffy faced off against an admiral, he nearly died. But Luffy, with a firm shake of his head, then declares that it didn't matter as he was going to win against this one, without a doubt, as he ends up showing his confident expression. Now, while the rest of the strides were unsure, they decided to put their trust into Luffy once again, as they tell Luffy that he better not lose this time, with Luffy declaring that he wouldn't. Seeing the Straw Hats trying to leave, Kizaru tries to stop them, only for Luffy to then appear as he then kicks away Kizaru's hand, as is when he then punches Kizaru in the face. Using cursed energy to amplify the blow as well as adding hockey into it, Kizaru gets sent flying and crashing into a tree, now rubbing his wounded cheek. At this, Kizaru looks at Luffy surprised since he didn't know he knew hockey, but nonetheless he gets up as this is when Luffy and Kizaru would then fight against each other. As this is when we then see Luffy actually begin to fight against Kizaru and is actually beginning to win. 
as Luffy was landing many blows on Kizaru, and these blows would be so devastating thanks to the fact of Luffy's cursed energy that it would actually cause Kizaru to be slowed down to the point where Luffy is actually being able to beat him. Now, soon after, soon afterwards, this is when Pacifist would then arrive, along with some backup from the Marines, as Luffy has to stop and take care of them as well, but nonetheless, Luffy was dominating this fight. But this is when Kizaru finally had enough of Luffy's attacks, as this is when he then shoots off multiple different beams at Luffy from all around, as this caused Luffy to have to, to be forced to activate his infinity once again, which was taking up a large amount of cursed energy. Getting tired of how everything was playing out, Luffy then decides that he needs to finish this off quickly, or else he won't be able to return back to his crew. So after destroying another pacifist with a maximum output blue, it looks like he's all one last time before smirking, as this is when he then activates it, his domain expansion, Unlimited Void. As Kizaru gets hit by this technique, he gets hit by it relatively hard, and Luffy seeing that he was stunned decided that this was the only opportunity he's going to get, as he ends up appearing in front of Kizaru once again, and telling him that he was strong, but like how Aokiji told him, there were still many out there in this world that were way stronger than him. As with a confident smile on his face, Luffy ends up landing a black flash into Kizaru's chest, sending him flying as Kizaru will be knocked unconscious by the blow, granting Luffy as well as the rest of the Straw Hats opportunity to leave. As after that, Luffy and the rest of the Straw Hats end up leaving Sabahori, although they encounter some marine ships that are able to take care of them, easily of course, as after that, they were now finally free to continue on with their voyage. But this only lasted for a little bit though, as the Straw Hats would then soon realize that they can't continue on with their voyage, cause they can't go to Fisherman Island. And the only way for you to go to Fisherman Island is that you need to stop by Soba Sabaori. So this kind of put a pause on them. As they try to figure out a different way to get back to Fisherman Island, they end up seeing this small little island on the shore as they decide to stop by there to go get a relaxing break while they try to come up with a plan and wait for the all the he and Sabaori to go down. As we see many days begin to pass for the Straw Hats, as throughout this time on this island, they begin to train with each other once again, they begin to eat with each other, they also still got some news mail from the from the seagull, but nonetheless, they were all enjoying their time. But this is when suddenly Luffy gets hit with some very bad news. As a newspaper would then land right in front of him, he ends up reading it, and this ends up sh shocking him to his core, as apparently Fire Fist Ace has been captured. Luffy is shocked at this, as he ends up turning to the rest of his crew, as he begins to explain to them about what just happened. And after hearing this, the rest of his crew would then wonder what they should do now, with Luffy wanting to think about it before suddenly ended up coming to the decision. It was obvious. He wants to go save his brother. And the Straw Hats, after hearing this, would then agree with Luffy's response. So with that, they would then take the Sunny and then continue on with their voyage as they decided to go save Ace from Impel Down. Now, the journey would take a while for the Straw Hats, but soon they would arrive at Impel Down only to find out that Ace had been taken. They had been way too late. Now, Luffy gets angry, but this is when he then finds out that they're going to be at Marineford. So he decides to turn back the ship and go towards Marineford, demanding that they go as fast as possible in order to save Ace. Now this causes Frankie to try operating the ship, as this is when he actually ends up operating it to the point where they end up blasting off to Marineford, and they actually end up flying up into the air in order to reach it. And as we turn our attention back into Marineford, by this point, Ace was now about to get executed. But luckily, this is when Whitebeard then pulls up. As Whitebeard pulls up, as well as the rest of his crew, this causes the war between Marineford to then begin. As all you can hear was a bunch of charge and battle cry from everyone around, as it was, it was time for the Whitebeard Pirates to go up against the Marines. And as we turn our attention to the Marines, we actually end up taking a look at the Admirals, only to be surprised as one of the Admirals was gravely injured, as this would be Kizaru, as he was still recovering from the damage he took in from the fight against Luffy. As the other Admirals actually questioned Kizaru about what happened, this caused many of them to decide that Luffy's bounty is going to go up after the war is over, since they couldn't allow someone like that to be running around. But nonetheless, Kizaru still had to stay there since he was still an admiral, and even though he was injured, he could still fight. So they decided to just wait there until finally Whitebeard decided to make his move, since Whitebeard was the most dangerous one out of everyone here. So as they wait for, you know, uh, Whitebeard to make his move, however, this is when suddenly someone would then begin to mention that something was falling from the sky. As they were to look up, and to their surprise, they would end up seeing it. As falling from the sky above, they would then see the Sunny arrive. At this, the Straw Hat finally made it in time for the war as he ended up seeing all the destruction that was caused, and thanks to their brief introduction here, this caused many of them to turn their attention there. Now, Son Goku, who was actually announcing everything, would actually take in the appearance of the Straw Hats, you finally he ends up seeing it. With his blue eyes now glistening, as well as a generous amount of energy just pulling away from the boy, drawing a lot of attention towards him, this is when Akainu then announces that Monkey D. Luffy had arrived onto the battlefield. Hearing the name of the rookie that caused so much damage, 
caused many of the marines and pirates to turn to Luffy in shock. Surprised he actually arrived here on this war. But that was not the end of Son Goku's announcement. As this when he actually begins to explain something that surprises everyone. As he decides to air out all of Luffy's history as he begins to explain how he grew up with Ace. And not only that but he also begins to explain that Luffy's father was Monkey D Dragon. Which causes the world to be shocked at this. With many of the marines turning their attention onto Luffy realizing that he cannot continue to be left alive. And seeing all the attention onto him Luffy would then scream at them to bring it on. With Luffy then muttering under his breath apologizing to his crew about everything. With his crew shrugging off nonetheless since they knew what they were going to get into. As they then declare proudly that they will continue fighting for Luffy and they will help him get his brother. To which Luffy would thank them. As with that, this is when we then get the epic war arc as the Straw Hats along with the Whitebeard Pirates then face off against the Marines. The Admirals then finally decide to stand up from their chairs as it was finally time for them to start making their move. They couldn't let Luffy leave this battlefield alive. After all, from, from the damage he caused against Kizaru and Aokiji, as well as the fact that this boy had slaughtered against three celestial, had, no, had slaughtered one celestial dragon, or well, actually no two, as Luffy had slaughtered one when he was a young boy, and not only that, but the fact of his legacy, they just couldn't afford to let Luffy leave this battlefield alive. Luffy, along with the rest of his crew, as they're going through a bunch of marines, Luffy would look up into the sky to see all the admirals approaching him. As he curses and prepares to fight, however, this is when all the commanders from uh, Whitebeard's ship would then arrive, as they didn't stop the admirals from reaching Luffy. At this, Luffy looks at them confused, wondering why they're saving him, to which they all then declare that Ace has spoke fondly of Luffy, and that they know that Luffy is Ace's brother. So with a determined expression, they would then ask Luffy to go save Ace, as he would, just, as he would try to hold off the admirals. And seeing this, Luffy would nod with a determined smile on his face, as this is when he then suddenly ends up blitzing multiple marines, defeating every single one of them, as he tries to reach towards Ace. All the while, the rest of the Straw Hat crew would also be assisting in this, as they would actually see pacifists land at the battlefield and begin to attack, to which they have to no choice but to take care of it. We also have this very cool moment as we see Mihawk try to stop the Straw Hats, as he tries to attack them only for Zoro to stop him. As this is when Zoro then firmly declares that he's not going to let him get past him, to which Mihawk then tells Zoro that he's not ready for this stage just yet, with Zoro shrugging it off and laughing in Mihawk's face, telling him that he's going to pay him back for the scar that he gave him, pointing out the scar that Mihawk gave him during the time of Baratie. And seeing the familiar scar, this will actually bring a smile into Mihawk's face, as he tells Zoro to show him everything that he has improved on, to which Zoro would then say gladly, as they would then fight off against each other. The rest of the war will continue on at this pace, with Luffy destroying hordes of marines and trying to get closer and closer to Ace. At this point, we will also see Whitebeard then touch down onto the battlefield, as he also begins to wreak havoc as he helps Luffy get to Ace uh, even closer and closer. As Luffy continues chasing and going after though, this is when suddenly things will then shift. As this is when suddenly an ginormous pressure then falls upon the island, as Whitebeard then curses as he looks up into the sky. At this, many other marines then stop what they're doing as many of them begin to lose hope and crumble onto their knees, as they can't deal with this no more. Whitebeard was already trouble enough, but now, this was just a hopeless battle. Even the admirals had to stop fighting as they look up into the sky in shock, as they couldn't believe that he actually decided to arrive here in Marine Ford. As floating in the sky above, we would then see Kaido. As, unfortunately, in this timeline, Shanks could not stop Kaido from getting to Marine Ford. As all the cameras will be painting up to Kaido as they realize that this really is the war of the best. As right now, all the people that were here, the number one rookie, the strongest man in the world, and the strongest beast of the world, were now here at the battlefield. As everyone was just screaming out in shock of how everything turned out to be. Luffy, who was still, you know, getting to Ace, saw the gentleman's creature, but ignored it as he was more focusing on getting to his brother. And seeing that everyone else was shocked, Luffy would use this opportunity as he ends up flying up into the sky and blitzing everyone that was there. So then Goku finally turns his attention back to Luffy, as well as Garp, as this is when Garp would then jump off from his stand and then try to face off against Luffy. And Luffy seeing this would have no choice but to retaliate as he ends up punching Garp with both of their fists connecting at the same time and blowing each other away. As this is where we didn't actually get a battle between Luffy and Garp, and this time an actual battle. Garp would be scolding Luffy, to looking, telling him to look at all the destruction he's been causing and all the harm he's done, asking Luffy is this truly the pirate he wants to be, with Luffy not caring at all of, any, of anything as he starts declaring that he's going to save Ace no matter what or who he has to go past, even if it meant him. So with that exchange not being done, we unfortunately get the sad battle of Luffy going up against Garp. As now the entirety of Marine Ford has spiraled out into chaos, as Kaido begins to attack the rest of Whitebeard's crew, declaring that he should fight him to which Whitebeard has no choice to, 
as if he doesn't fight Kaido, that means his crew will continue getting damaged and even getting killed. So with that, Whitebeard had to face off against Kaido, which resulted in a lot of people getting caught in the collision. At the same time, the Admirals realized that they now have an opportunity to take care of both Whitebeard and Kaido, so they decided to take advantage of it while Kaido was focusing more on Luffy and glaring angrily at him. Luffy throughout the entire fight with Gar will be tearing up a lot, as he did not want it to come like this, but unfortunately there was no other way as him and Gar will be fighting, like going all out with each other. As Gar will be laughing with tears also dropping from his eyes as he tells Luffy that like that he's never gonna end up becoming a good pirate with Luffy telling him to shut up. With both of them letting tears fall from their eyes while also laughing and fighting, it will eventually be time to end it as after going multiple blows with each other, Gar was feeling exhausted. He couldn't keep up like he did in his old days and seeing the opportunity, Luffy then apologizes to Garp with Garp also apologizing to Luffy. As those were the final words with each other, this is when Garp would then release a full power punch with Luffy doing the same thing, both of them giving it all they got as this is when Luffy ends up unleashing a black flash with Garp releasing his full powered attack. The attack being so powerful, it shook the very foundation of Marineford and caused many of them to actually lose hearing temporarily. As this is when Garp's fist would then suddenly erupt with blood as his muscles would tear up from the blow that Luffy just unleashed, with Luffy having the same thing but luckily he had reverse curse energy. As Luffy's, hand recover, as Luffy's arm recovered entirely, Garp would look at his arm before nodding his head painfully as he firmly declared that he lost. As he looks at Luffy with a smile on his face, as this is when Luffy has no choice but to kick Garp, knocking him unconscious. As Luffy will look at Garp with a sad expression on his face, he then turns his attention back to Ace as he then smiles at him, happy that he will be able to save him. However, unfortunately for Luffy, he was too caught up in the moment to fail to realize that Sengoku was entirely serious at this point, and in fact it didn't look like he was going to lift a finger. And the reason why was pretty simple, as this is when Luffy would then be hit in the stomach by a magma fist. As Luffy would be hit by the attack, he didn't even get to see it coming to the point where he couldn't even act at his infinity. And that was not the only thing, as he begins to get slashed with magma slashes all around, as Luffy coughs up blood. A seeing this would then begin to scream out at Luffy, telling him no, as he tries to break out the chains but it was pointless. As Luffy tries to activate reverse curse energy, but unfortunately it looked like it was too late, as this is when suddenly a kind of would then appear right in front of Luffy's face before once again punching him in the stomach. As now Luffy had two holes in his stomach and slashes on his back, as by now the boy looked like he was dead. As this is when a kind of then tells him that this was going to be the end for him, you pirate scum. As Luffy is unable to do anything, as his eyes then grow hollow as he falls down onto his back. As the majority of Marine 4 will be frozen at the sight they just seen. With Luffy's crew crying out to him but not getting any response, as this is when Akainu then kicks Luffy's body off the ground as he would then fall from the very ledge that he was on, as he was so close to Ace but now he was no longer in reach. Ace would be crying out Luffy's name as he couldn't believe that he's now gonna lose his brother again, all because of his foolish mistake, while at the same time all of Luffy's crew were just crying out in shock with Zoro now fighting angrily against Mihawk as he couldn't believe his captain was now gone, as he would be cursing out Akainu as he was now looking to get it back in blood. Nonetheless, the reports would be spreading all around as they tried to get this to the station as quickly as possible that Monkey D. Luffy had passed away, with the rest of Marine Ford trying to continue on. All the while though, something was off, as this is when we then turn our attention back to Luffy's body. You'll see Luffy now landing on the ground of Marine Ford scattered about, as everyone was still fighting while he was just there, seemingly dead. But the thing was, something was off. As if no one ever noticed that Luffy's heart was slowly bumping up and down, and that the ground underneath Luffy was suddenly was seemingly turning bouncy. As we turn to Luffy's mindscape, we will see the boy now sitting down calmly on the ground, as he now looked completely healed up. As inside his mind, we will see Luffy now sitting across from someone who was giggling, as we see the shadow-like appearance of this person, as this will actually be the gum gum fruit. As Luffy will look at the gum gum fruit, he begins to assume that he might have been dead only for the gum gum fruit to then laugh at Luffy's thoughts and begin bouncing around once again, as Luffy tries to ask him multiple questions only for it to not answer at all. This will rile up you Luffy once again, as he tries to ask anything only for him to suddenly realize it. Now I get it. As Luffy looks at the thing that was bouncing around as it had no care in the world about anything that was happening, that's when Luffy finally understand it all. It made perfect sense. As Luffy will look at it, this is when he then smiles and also begins to bounce around as well, as the thing seeing Luffy bounce around would also bounce along with him. At this, Luffy begins to have fun in his mindscape bouncing around these warm glowing area, 
as this is when Luffy didn't realize that this thing, whatever it was, was a part of him. And for some stupid reason, he kept trying to push it away when it's always been there with him the entire time. As Luffy would then shake his head about how ironic everything turned out to be, he would then have a smile on his face as he then thinks that from now on, he's going to accept it. As this is when he then continues giggling along in his mindscape as we now turn back to the present. As back on the battlefield, things were actually beginning to seem hopeless. It seems as if the very presence of Luffy, now no longer being there, had taken the title of the entire battle entirely. As now the pirates were losing. Whitebeard was still facing off against Kaido and the man was relentless in his attack, as this was the battle he's been waiting for. And Whitebeard was slowly losing thanks to his old age, as well as the fact that he had an illness. So things were really looking hopeless for him. The same can be said with the other pirates, as the Straw Hats were also trying to get out of here. Since now that Luffy was gone, they saw no point continuously on continuing the battle, with Zoro trying to get them out of here as well as he was facing off against Mihawk. As now that Luffy was gone, he was thrust with the responsibility of trying to make sure they were safe. After all, he was the vice captain, even, and even though he wanted to get his revenge on Akainu, he realized that they, they couldn't do it at this point, he needs to keep the others safe, as he's right now apologizing to Luffy mentally. But this is when suddenly, something would then stop, as everyone would then hear it. Drum beats? All around, they would all hear these drum beats that were happening as well as giggling and laughing, as Son Goku's eyes then widen. No, it can't be. But unfortunately, it was too late. As suddenly the entire ground of the battlefield would then shift, as it was now bouncy and all squishy, causing many marines as well as pirates who hit the ground to suddenly just bounce off of it and begin to bounce around it like a trampoline. Even the straw heads get caught up in this as they're also bouncing around, wondering what was going on anymore. Wipeer and Kaido have to literally stop their fight as Kaido also takes in the scenery, as he wonders what was going on as well as what was all that giggling about. Wipeer who was looking at all this was also confused. Until this is when suddenly he then ends up looking up into the sky and is in shock about what he was seeing. No way. Huh, I guess it takes more than that to kill that brat. Kato now looking at Whitebeard confused when entering to the sky as he is now also interested. Everyone would then turn their attention onto the sky as by now the sun was seemingly gleaming as this is when everyone would then see it. Akainu who finally catch wind of everything that was happening would then look up into the sky as well and what he sees pissed him off entirely. With his hair now completely white and now his blue eyes activated, we would see casually floating in the air and giggling and laughing would be none other than Luffy. He was still alive. All the Straw Hats who see Luffy begin to cheer as many of the tears begin to fall from their eyes as they're really happy to see their captain. While all the, all the Whitebeard pirates who were there and after hearing and seeing all of the things that Luffy did were now also happy by the fact that he was still alive as well. While the Marines were now batshit terrified since this guy was literally just killed off a few seconds ago and now he's back alive, what was going on? As Luffy would be giggling and laughing, this is when Akainu would then scream out at Luffy. And he curses him for still being alive but says that he's not going to make that mistake again as he then rushes at Luffy trying to hit him. And Luffy seeing Akainu for a second would then get serious before suddenly end up laughing in Akainu's face as this is when he then punches him and to everyone's surprise, Luffy's fist would then grow into a very cartoony like size as he ends up slamming Akainu straight into the ground, not being affected by the heat. Akainu gets angrier as he tries to charge at Luffy, as he barrages him with multiple magma fists only for them to stop short of Luffy as he continues laughing like a maniac. By this point, Luffy is now clowning Akainu as he begins to bounce all around the battlefield of Marineford as he begins to slap Akainu away with his ginormous cartoony like arms as Luffy's body would literally go into different shapes and everything as he begins to cartoon fight with Akainu in real life. It looks something straight out of Tom and Jerry. As Akainu gets even angrier and angrier by the second, he starts having enough of it as he curses out Luffy, wondering what the heck was he. At this, this will cause Luffy to then suddenly stop as this is when he then smirks, as he actually flows up into the air. By now, everyone would actually take in Luffy's appearance as now they actually realize that his appearance looked kind of godly. As with the sun now gleaming in perfect position, with Luffy's eyes now being blue and his hair turning white, he looks at Akainu before stating that, Throughout heaven and earth, he alone is the honored one. As this is when Luffy would then unleash a hollow purple on Akainu. The man's eyes would be widened as he couldn't do anything to stop it or dodge out of the way in time. As he would then be hit by the hollow purple and be killed off instantly, as there would be nothing left of him by the time it was done. Everyone who had just seen that would be shocked, as they would literally take in Luffy's divine presence as Luffy begins to unleash this aura that causes many of them to fall into their knees hopelessly. As the only thing they are able to do actually is just laugh hollowly, there was nothing they were able to do. 
while all the straws who had just seen Luffy's ultimate move and everything would be shocked before they start cheering. Sengoku, realizing that Luffy was a threat, would then try getting into his Buddha mode, to which Luffy, after seeing that, then sighs as he ends up creating a ginormous cartoon hand and then slap him away into the seas, telling Akainu that it was bad to play around like that. As Luffy would then giggle in that response, he would then turn back to Ace before suddenly teleporting in front of him, as is when Luffy then bends the chains to the point where he's actually able to free Ace entirely. Ace would be shocked at Luffy's appearance and ask him how did he turn out like this, to which Luffy would just shrug, telling him that he doesn't know, but honestly he feels more happier than he's ever been. And seeing this, Ace doesn't even know how to come up with the response, but is just glad to see that Luffy was alright. As after this, this is when suddenly multiple marines then try to pull up, as many of them who still had the will to fight would then try to stop Luffy, to which Luffy would then smile as he ended up smacking the ground, causing a ginormous wave to actually hit them. But instead of getting like, you know, actually damaged, they're all just sent flying as the entire ground of Marine 4 was now bouncy like a trampoline. As this is when Luffy began to bounce all over uh, Marine 4 with Ace in a very cartoony like way, as everyone else can do nothing more but watch all this in shock. With the Straw Hats also beginning to have fun with this one as they begin to use the bouncy terrain to their advantage, as they begin to take on Marines all around them, using the bouncy terrain to their advantage while also thanking Luffy mentally. As Whitebeard would see all this happening, he would then have a smile on his face as he remembers his conversation with Roger. He would tell Roger that it looks like he might be wrong after all, as Roger had actually estimated that his son might be the one to find the One Piece. But now, now that he actually sees him up close and actually seeing everything that he's done, this is when Whitebeard would then firmly declare that it seems as though Luffy is going to become the next King of the Pirates, as he smiles at this new era. And realizing that this was the end of his era, this is when Whitebeard then turns to Kaido, tells him that this was the generation he expects to see in the new world, and he tells Kaido to prepare for it, as this is when he then collides with Kaido one last time. Using all his energy into one quake fist, he then attacks Kaido, with Kaido doing the same thing, as this attack is so powerful it ends up shaking up the entirety of Marine Ford, causing more destruction. But as the blast would then fade away, we would see Whitebeard then pass away, with a smile on his face. As by now, his old age had finally came up to him, and his heart had finally stopped. At this point, the rest of the Whitebeard pirates would see this, and they would all be upset about how everything turned out, but they also realized that right now they couldn't do anything. A lot of their men were way too injured, and there was nothing they could do. Although they throw curses at Kaido and swear revenge, they soon decide to take up everything that they can and start leaving. And although Ace wanted to do nothing more but go back to avenge Whitebeard, he knew that this was Whitebeard's way of, of passing on everything to him. As he looks at Whitebeard one last time with a sad smile on his face, he ends up leaving along with the rest of Whitebeard's crew. Luffy also ends up gathering his own crew as he tells them it was finally time for them to leave, to which they also agreed to this. Zoro will look at Mihawk one last time as he tells them that this fight is not over and that this was only the beginning of it, to which Mihawk after hearing this would smile, telling Zoro that he would take him on any time, as this will be the end of Marine Ford. As both the Straw Hat Pirates as well as the Whitebeard Pirates had gone away safely, with them winning the war in this timeline. Now that Ace had been saved and soon after taking away Whitebeard's body, they decide to bury it as after that it was finally time for Ace to take up the mantle as the leader of the Whitebeard Pirates. Soon after this, Luffy knows that his bounty is going to get increased by a lot, as by now they might even consider Luffy to be an Emperor of the Seas. To which Luffy, after hearing this and thinking about it, would then smile, saying that he's ready for anything. As after that, both brothers would then say goodbye to each other, as is when Ace had to take in Luffy's new appearance. As now, Luffy's hair had stayed white entirely, as not only that, but his eyes had now completely changed to blue. He looked at Luffy as he asked Luffy if he's going to stay like that for a while, to which Luffy then says that it's actually permanent. As this was Luffy full on accepting Gear 5 as well as his, you know, infinity and everything. This was Luffy at the peak of his abilities. As he looks at Ace before smiling, telling him that the next time they meet, they should get a drink. As after that, both Ace as well as Luffy then go their separate ways, with both the Straw Hat and the White Bear Pirates then going their, well, separate ways as well. As finally, after this, we didn't get a time skip. Throughout the following years, the Straw Hat would go through many adventures. They would stumble upon many mysteries and overcome them all, with Luffy enjoying all of it to the very last moment. As all around the world, Luffy had gotten many names. The first being Straw Hat Luffy. Later on, he got Sun God Luffy. But finally, as the final title, he actually ended up getting the title of Pirate King Luffy. As anyone who mentioned Luffy's name, he would actually be mentioned as the Pirate King, as he finally achieved his goal in getting the One Piece. 
as Luffy would take in all the scenery with a smile on his face. As not only that, but thanks to Luffy's influence around the world, him as well as the Revolutionary Army were able to team up and take care of the world government to the point where now, now Kuma is actually free. He's free from the hold that the Celestial Dragons had on him. And while Dragon is trying to currently reestablish a new world, Luffy will be held as the Pirate King as he will be enjoying these moments of life. As this is where we now end the story to what if Luffy was Gojo's reincarnation. I want to thank you all so much for sitting here with me on this journey. This what if took a lot out of me guys. This was my very first One Piece what if. And I know I went through a lot of trouble with going through Luffy's backstory and everything of the story. But like I said, this is my first One Piece what if that I truly completed. I still am trying to get better at trying to do these guys. But hey, it is what it is. Hopefully you guys do enjoy it for what it is. I do appreciate, I appreciate every single one of you for being here. I'm sorry if my voice sounds a little bit weird because I've been talking for so long for ever since the beginning of this video. So you guys have no idea how much damage my voice has taken. But still, nonetheless, I'm happy to bring y'all content nonetheless. I had a lot of fun making this what if. And with that being said, guys, this is your host, Seiji Samurai. I'm going to go give my voice, a, my voice a break, probably study a little bit. And nonetheless, it's your host, and he's signing off. Peace, and have a lovely day.